Okay. Hi there, folks. I'm Heidi Joy Trethaway with the OpenStack Foundation, and thank you for coming to this lightning talk about the user survey. Um, I have a few more copies of the user survey coming over from the Media Lounge, um, so if you didn't get a copy, hopefully I will have them here before the end of the session. Also, um, because PDFs are wonderful things to have, um, if you go to openstack.org forward slash user hyphen survey, you can download your copy of the PDF. Um, you can also watch a four minute video where I'll go through the, the highlights of the 12 most important slides or findings from the user survey. So if you don't feel like digesting all 66 slides, or excuse me, all 66 pages of the full length report, um, you can definitely do the four minute video. So let's talk a little bit about the user survey. Um, what I'm hoping to cover here is to give you a little more insight into some of the um, key findings and then also answer your questions. I'm really thrilled about how many folks are here um, and I'm really eager to have a conversation with you. So please don't be shy about raising your hand. I will repeat your question for you for the camera. So in terms of d demographics, um, what we see is increasing user diversity. Um, and just to give you context, um, over the last 12 months, we've surveyed more than 2,500 individuals in our community. Only about a third of the people who answer one survey also answer the next one, um, which means that we have, although a broader base of users, we're not just surveying the same users over and over again. Um, it also means that we're constantly uh, starting from scratch in a way in terms of marketing the survey and getting it out to the, to the full community. Um, we know that 32% of users have more than one role, and Cloud Architect, which was actually just in the last year, we started asking folks if that was one of the ways they referred to themselves. Um, that's, our, that's our top person. What, what we hear from the survey in the 1800 plus verbatim comments um, about OpenStack um, are comments about the community, about technology, and about things they'd like to see improved. And so one of the things we'd really like to do after this um, cycle, because we were kind of hustling just to get this report created for the um, for this summit cycle, but afterwards we'd like to really dig in further to those 1800 verbatim comments, which either came as a result of the net promoter score uh, uh, question where we followed up and said um, what is the primary reason why you might uh, recommend OpenStack to a friend or colleague. Um, also we asked what do you like best about OpenStack and also where, are the room, where is there room for improvement. And so in those things um, we, we have a lot of comments, um, a lot more context and detail that we could share with the development community from the users. Um, we know that IT makes up the greatest share of users, but if you look over the last several cycles, the slice of the pie that IT dominates is shrinking. We're seeing more and more diverse workloads, diverse industries using OpenStack. And also, I'm really excited to share with you that um, we're seeing greater geographic diversity um, in that 61% of users, 74% of deployments are physically located outside of the United States. And this summer, we hope to launch the user survey in multiple languages, including simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, specifically targeting Asia, knowing that we're going to Sydney for the next summit, so that Australia, New Zealand, as well as Asia regions, we're hoping to see much greater participation from the user survey and to reduce the, uh, uh, the language barriers that the user survey creates when it's only available in English. Um, so I, I really am excited about that, and I hope for those of you who live in that region, you might also share this with friends and colleagues, because I'd like to see more representation there. One, la one last thought, and this is countering some FUD that we see pretty regularly. Um, folks are saying, oh yeah, big corporations can do it, small corporations can do it, but mid-size, I don't know. I, uh, as recently as a couple weeks ago, um, I saw a journalist writing that, and um, I just want to point out that the demographics that we are seeing in the user survey absolutely counter that, that in fact the largest share of users is mid-size organizations. You see a nice even distribution of um, organizations of all sizes using OpenStack, and I also want to point out that when we just look at those organizations that registered deployments, um, this number is largely consistent. 
So let's talk a little bit about some of the user perspectives that we saw. Um, one thing that we did differently this year is we used a different mechanism for visualizing the data on business drivers for OpenStack. And for the last several cycles, users have consistently told us cost was a number re one reason for choosing OpenStack. So I thought it was really interesting that what bubbled up to the top in this, in this survey was avoiding vendor lock-in, uh, followed by the opportunity to accelerate innovation and increase operational efficiency. Um, so there's a good amount of debate on the user survey team about what does this mean and how is this changing. But ultimately, I think it's important that we keep a pulse on why people are choosing OpenStack and what can we do to improve adoption or to make it easier and better for people to adopt OpenStack. So I want to pause for a second and ask those folks who are part of either the user committee, we have a couple of user committee members in the room, or um, the user survey working group to please stand up. I'd like to acknowledge you because you did so much work to support this effort. Come on, people, I see you, I see you. So thank you. Um, these are some awesome folks who not only dug into those 1800 verbatim comments, but also looked at a, a slide deck that was probably 90 slides long, each of which was a, a complicated chart to crunch, just like this one. Um, they read through that whole 66 page report multiple times, and they are instrumental in helping to shape the way this report looks. Why I think that's so important is because although I'm an employee of the foundation, I feel like this needs to be that community effort that really reflects what users are thinking, not what the foundation is thinking, or not what foundation marketing is thinking, And as I'm a member of the marketing team. So I would also encourage you to be a part of the user survey working group, which does require a confidentiality agreement so that we don't um, inadvertently expose any user's data, um, but does give you some really wonderful insights into what users are really thinking. I liked this quote here, OpenStack is a force to be reckoned with, a powerful array of cloud features that businesses have come to expect. One thing that is not my favorite thing to tell you about, but honestly, we need to, we need to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, is that uh, according to our net promoter scores, um, we saw them drop pretty much across the board um, to a certain degree. And um, this one was one of the more positive charts that shows that users with more recently launched clouds are more highly satisfied with OpenStack. Um, but I'm reporting these um, less exciting NPS numbers because I think it's really important that as a community we embrace that good and bad um, and really dig into those comments um, about where people feel like OpenStack has room to grow. Particularly they refer to the user experience of OpenStack and manageability for OpenStack as being areas where they'd like to see OpenStack improve. And the cool thing about that is that if you look at the community generated roadmap, we have a session that we've already completed um, at this summit and it's recorded. Um, it shows how the community generated roadmap top priorities actually align perfectly with those um, instant or with those issues that the users addressed and so the user survey work group actually compiled themes um, around uh, what what are the comments from people like what are we hearing over and over again around manageability or user experience so I was pretty excited to see um, th those themes come come forward uh, thank you for asking uh, question was what is NPS it NPS stands for a net promoter score which um, it takes the percentage of people who rank you a number or who rank you a nine or a ten um, on the scale of zero to ten. Uh, those people are considered promoters. Folks who say zero to six, they're considered attractors. Seven and eight considered neutral. And so, if you take the percentage of promoters minus the percent of detractors, that equals your net promoter score. I have one more question. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay, he's. This, yeah, um, to repeat your question, um, you're asking uh, why are the N numbers um, as they are, uh, you can see them underneath uh, 
like uh, 2010 through 2014 is 80. Uh, the end numbers represent the number of deployments that indicated that they were launched in 2010 through 2014. So it's the number of respondents for each of those bands. I want to um, skip forward a little bit, uh, just as we don't have a ton of time, um, to talk a little bit about deployments, because I want us to think differently about this chart, which we're always so fond of showing um, when we talk user survey, uh, which is showing the percentage of deployments that are in production. Um, in this case, the, the percentage of deployments in production edged up just one point year over year, but the object of the game is not to get us all the way to 100% of clouds in production, right? We want to see new clouds constantly coming online. And so what was so exciting and encouraging for me to see is that new projects are indeed coming online. When we looked at the number of clouds launched in 2016 and 2017, that's the, that's the majority of clouds. And the average um, age of an OpenStack cloud is just 1.68 years. So that was some exciting stuff to see come out of the uh, survey. We also saw uh, uh, more, most OpenStack users running Metaka and Newton, and this is one of my favorite kind of very colorful charts to show you, um, kind of give you a sense of how the clouds migrate over time to the newer releases. One more thing I wanted to kind of make a point of before I take a couple more questions. Uh, is the idea that the average cloud is using nine projects, and you might be wondering, well, which nine projects? In general, they're running all of the core services of OpenStack. Um, among OpenStack's core services, 89% um, adoption or greater um, among all the clouds. And then also, um, just we're seeing a lot of projects grow in adoption and full use. Um, these projects are gaining in popularity, and then finally, um, users indicate they're really interested in adopting these additional projects. So I want to pause here and uh, take some more questions. And I have additional slides that I can kind of skip over to to talk about specific parts of the user survey. But I have to repeat your question. So go ahead. Yes, many people are. Um, are And I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, so I'm having trouble repeating. The first part of your question was that I had mentioned that OpenStack, uh, one of the top reasons for adopting OpenStack was avoiding vendor lock-in. So you're asking for a net. Okay. So he's asking if there will be um, additional impact on OpenStack adoption as Microsoft um, brings forward another alternative to VMware. Um, and that remains to be seen. And when we see it, we will see it in the user survey. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I have a, a greater comment than that. Okay. Any other questions? My, my interest is yes. Yeah, I'm really glad that you asked that. Yes. Uh, so we are asking um, different regions, uh, or we're asking everyone worldwide to answer the user survey. And then if you would like to analyze the results, for example, just for the Asia Pacific region, then what you can do is go to openstack.org forward slash analytics, apply one of the six global filters, which includes a uh, geographic region, and then you'll be able to look at the results that are specific to your region. I'm afraid the, the last lightning talk went a bit how you can get that data. You would get that you would get that data through this website that I have up there. How do I get the data? <laughs> how I get the data is that we are requesting folks um, answer the user survey and then that information goes uh, and populates our database. So that that yes, exactly. Um, there are 
we, uh, we saw about 24% of respondents to the survey uh, from Asia last time. And um, I'm sorry, but I have to wrap up, but I'd love to talk to you a little bit more um, at the end. So thank you very much for attending.